Around 200,000 years before the Clone Wars, a brutal war between two primitive species was taking place on the backwards world of Notron. Although they were regarded as insignificant at this time, these two species would one day go on to form the Republic and the Mandalorians, while their planet was destined to become the galactic capital, Coruscant. The first race was known as the Zell. They were warlike and adaptable, utilising their ability to innovate to eke out an existence upon the cold world of Notron. Their competitors were rather different to the Zell. Known as the Tongue, this species had a much lower birth rate and population size, but made up for this by becoming lethal warriors. The war between them lasted many millennia, and after a supervolcano erupted on the planet, the Tongue warriors truly embraced their warrior culture, naming themselves De Werda Verda, or Warriors of the Shadow. Although the Tongue were almost victorious during the fallout from the volcano, the Zell banded together into the 13 battalions. Now united, the Zell drove the Tongue from the planet. Now free from their seemingly eternal war with the Tongue, the Zell flourished, eventually evolving into humanity and transforming Notron into the planet-wide Yuka Monopolis of Coruscant. The Tongue were not so lucky. After their exile from Notron, they arrived upon the barren planet of Rune, where they faded into obscurity for over 200,000 years, only faintly remembered within the ancient legends of humanity. However, around 7,000 years before the Battle of Endor, a warlord united the Tongue, claiming the title of Soul Ruler, or Mandoa in the Tongue language. The United Tongue re-embraced their warrior culture, claiming a jungle world in the Outer Rim. This world was a harsh place, filled with terrifying beasts known as mythosaurs. These beasts were said to be enormous, with some claiming they were the size of small cities. The Tongue tamed or killed these beasts, claiming their planet as their own. In honour of their first Mandoa, or Mandalore I in Galactic Basic, they renamed themselves the Mandalorians and their homeworld, Mandalore. They developed a strict code of honour, emphasising the importance of strength, family and honour. They also developed a rich religion centred around war. They came to believe that the stars were the fallen Mandalores of the past, and started worshipping a diverse pantheon of gods. The first god was known as Hod Haran. This god represented the misfortune of nature, and was portrayed as the trickster god. The second god was known as the sloth god, or Arasam in their language. This deity was said to tempt the Mandalorian people into peace, hedonism and idol consumption. This god was at constant war with the Mandalorian's favourite god, Kad Harlinga, the god of destruction and bringer of change. They believed that by following in the footsteps of their war god, they would ascend to the afterlife, where they would protect their families for the rest of eternity. After a thousand years of building up their civilization on their new homeworld, the Mandalorians embraced cutting edge weaponry and began to expand outwards within their home sector. The Tongue Mandalorians soon came into contact with the similarly aggressive Mandalin Giants, and the two species clashed ferociously. However, the species were so impressed with one another's fighting prowess that many Mandalin Giants joined the Mandalorian way of life. This marked the beginning of a great change for the Mandalorians, slowly changing them from a species into a culture or way of life. However, other species were not so lucky. The Navuta species were entirely driven to extinction by the Mandalorians, the first victims of their warlike ways. After this victory, the Mandalorians set their sights on the Core Worlds. Their first target was a technologically advanced species known as the Basilisk. Despite Republic assistance, the Basilisk saw their fortifications overrun, and recognising that they were going to lose the war, poisoned their own planet. The Mandalorians left the planet, but not before ransacking a large number of basilisk war droids. The Mandalorians also kidnapped a significant number of reptilian basilisks, who became known as Lagatos war dragons, after the Mandalorians drove any sentience from them through years of mistreatment. Around 4,000 years before the Clone Wars, their first great leader in generations rose through the ranks and claimed the title of Mandalore and the sacred mask of Mandalore I. Travelling to the world of Shogun, 
he received a divine vision. He was to do away with the old pantheon of gods, and instead, the Mandalorians were to worship the act of war itself. The old gods were replaced with the six actions, or raisonnaires in Mandalorian. These core tenets consisted of wearing armour, speaking the Mandalorian language, defending oneself and family, raising one's children as Mandalorians, contributing to your clan, and rallying to the causes of the Mandalore. After returning to the Mandalorian clans to inform them of this revelation, the Mandalorians embraced this new way of thinking and were reinvigorated with an insatiable desire for war. Now known as Mandalore the Indomitable, he led his people on several successful campaigns, including one upon the cyborg slavers known as the Iskaloni, freeing many of the slaves who bolstered the ranks of the Mandalorian war machine. Again, this influx of new warriors further pushed the Mandalorians towards becoming a culture rather than a singular species. Mandalore the Indomitable led his crusaders on a quest for a suitable opponent. During this time, Mandalore the Indomitable had stories of the Sith Lord, Ulic Quadroma. Quadroma had recently seized leadership of the dark cult known as the Krath, and was thought by Mandalore to have strained the Krath's military resources in their numerous expansion campaigns, leaving their home system of Empress Teta vulnerable to assault. Testing the Krath's capabilities, Mandalore led the Crusaders in numerous minor assaults against the Krath defences. When Basilisk war droids damaged an important carbonite smelting station, these skirmishes drew Queldroma's attention. Queldroma established contact with Mandalore, threatening to destroy him unless he submitted to the Krath. In his arrogance, Mandalore proposed a duel between the two. Keldroma agreed to this, specifying that if he won, Mandalore and his crusaders would pledge allegiance to him. Mandalore the Indomitable, in keeping with Mandalorian honour, accepted the terms of the duel. Keldroma and Mandalore met on the planet of Kuar. The Mandalore sought to balance his chances against the force-wielding Sith Lord, dictating that he would be able to use his fearsome basilisk war droid. Mandalore the Indomitable started the fight by launching a volley of blaster bolts at Keldroma. Despite Mandalore's prowess in combat and with his Basilisk war droid, Keldroma was able to utilize the force to dodge incoming fire and destroy the Basilisk mount with his lightsaber. Recognizing that the lightsaber still gave Keldroma an edge, Mandalore challenged the Sith to battle him with the Mythosaur Axe, a traditional Mandalorian weapon. Keldroma agreed to these conditions and went on to battle the Mandalore. However, Mandalore the Indomitable's weapon was shattered by the Sith Lord and he was pushed over a cliff. Unable to fight any longer, he yielded to the Sith Lord. The Mandalore accepted his defeat and requested to be slain, wishing to die in combat like a true Mandalorian. Keldroma refused, assuring the Mandalore that he had a far more useful fate in store for him than death. Mandalore the Indomitable subsequently swore his allegiance to Keldroma, thus uniting the Mandalorian clans with the Sith, an allegiance that would change the course of Mandalorian history.